Hi, Coach Tom Avery here, head pro at the Consistent Tennis Wins Academy in sunny Naples, Florida. Today's lesson is on how to gain more control with your forehand. So stay tuned. Sometimes I'll hear some of my students say, I just didn't have my touch today. I didn't have my feel today with my forehand. And the reason for that is, is because players are trying to make last second adjustments with their wrist in the hitting zone. Now, when you're trying to make last second adjustments in the wrist, with the wrist rather, in the hitting zone, it's very tricky business because, you know, if the racket face is two to three degrees off, you know, if it's two to three degrees laid back, which is barely visible by the human eye, or two, two to three degrees forward, you're going to be making mistakes. Your opponent's going to be smiling, okay? So it's not what you do in the hitting zone. It's what you do before the hitting zone. So I tell players, you know, you've got to concentrate on your backswing, how you're bringing the racket back. And then as you swing forward, you have to realize that the shoulder is the hinge. You're not playing around with the lower arm and the wrist in the hitting zone, okay? So, you know, players see, when you watch pros on TV, you think that they're using their wrist in the hitting zone. This simply is not true, okay? It happens after the ball is gone. Remember that. The, the wrist is rolling after the ball is gone. So what you do up to the hitting zone and through the hitting zone, which is about an, a foot to a foot and a half, is what really matters. So you have to concentrate on your backswing, keeping, you know, you don't want the racket wobbling around. That way you don't have to make, you know, you're not thinking you have to make adjustments in the hitting zone. Keep it fixed, you know, nice and steady as you bring it back. And then make the shoulder the hinge as you swing. I tell students sometimes, just put your hand behind your back and learn to swing like that. And you see, my wrist and forearm are not making any adjustments. I'm just using the shoulder as the hinge. Now, once I get through the hitting zone, you can relax the wrist and forearm on your finish because the ball's already gone. But the key for you is if you don't have your touch or your feel, you're probably moving that wrist and forearm in the hitting zone. So, Learn to take a nice, simple backswing and learn to swing from the shoulder right there. The shoulder's the hinge, and you're going to be vertical in that contact zone. Okay, remember, if the racket is closed here, facing down, and you're swinging on a low to high plane, you're going to be vertical in that contact zone. That's what's going to really give you some nice touch and feel, consistent touch and feel, okay? Being vertical in that contact zone. So let me just demo a few and I'll show you a, a few key points in slow motion. Okay, when you go out to practice, remember, focus on one or two points. Remember, too, that the contact zone is about a foot to a foot and a half. So Think of it this way, when you're swinging about, you know, nine inches before contact, so let's say as you're coming into that contact zone, starting here, that racket cannot be wobbling around. You want the racket moving from low to high and vertical in the contact zone. So nine inches before, boom, there's your hit and nine inches after. You want that racket vertical moving from low to high. That way, if your timing is slightly off, you're still gonna keep the ball in play because you've got that, that foot and a half area where your racket's moving low to high and, a, and in a vertical position. 
So that's how you get really consistent, okay? So if you hit it, you know, a little early, nine inches after, you're still going to be vertical. If you hit it a little late, you're still vertical in that contact zone. So here's a little practice session. I'm focusing on, I'm focusing on swinging from the shoulder and not playing around with the wrist and forearm in that contact zone. All right, here we go. Okay, watch here in slow motion. Very simple backswing. The racket face stays closed as I'm bringing the racket back, meaning it's tilted down slightly. Now, as I come into the contact zone, right there, I'm about nine inches from the contact. The wrist and forearm will not be playing around now in this contact zone. You'll see as the tape rolls that the wrist and forearm stay in that position and the shoulder is the hinge. You can see the ball is gone now. The wrist and forearm now can break. There, you'll see it there. Okay, here again in slow motion from the side. Simple backswing, racket face stays closed on the backswing, tilted down slightly. Now notice as I approach the hitting zone, right there. The shoulder's the hinge. I'm not playing around with the wrist and the forearm. Now you'll see as the tape rolls, I hit through that area right there. Wrist and forearm now can break, and you'll see that happen on this finish. I'll roll the wrist and forearm right there. Well, I hope you enjoyed that video. Use those tips. Remember, if you want a consistent forehand, you've got to be consistently vertical in that contact zone area, that foot to a foot and a half. So work on that, and believe me, your forehand is going to be a confident shot for you, a reliable shot. All the best. Remember, please subscribe to the channel. That helps me out a lot, keeps these videos coming. Um, hit the like button, share it with your friends, uh, post any comments or questions below. And if you want my free forehand course, check the link over here to your right or in the description box below. I also have a free backhand course and a free serve course. All the best and happy forehands. Take care.